the study started because we were previously working on an experiment where we were controlling the interactions within a Bose-Einstein condensate by applying an external electromagnetic field. And we wanted to extend this experiment by coupling not just the parameters of the electromagnetic field to the interactions, but also the momentum of the atoms. And in doing this, we realized that it would be possible to quantum simulate the chiral BF theory. It's a model that was proposed in the 90s. So people were very interested in what happens uh, with uh, quantum mechanical particles, like electrons, uh, when they are in a plane, and you put a very strong magnetic field uh, to the plane. And uh, they know that in this situation, there is what is called fractional quantum Hall effect. So you have effectively somehow like particles that when you exchange them, they behave very strangely. They not, don't behave like the normal particles, but uh, differently. Then people wonder whether this behavior could occur also in a line. And uh, uh, they propose a theory for what would happen in a line. And uh, this was really a purely theoretical idea, like a thought experiment. And no one could see that. And uh, what we did uh, in our experiment with Bose-Einstein condensate is to give reality uh, to this uh, old theory. And it had some cool phenomena that were expected, but no one had seen it in nature. And then we could engineer this theory. This is a so-called gauge theory. So it's a class of models uh, that are used to describe nature and that are used in many contexts. At the beginning, we thought it was a simple experiment that just was giving rise to current kind of interactions. However, as we started digging into the to theory and the experiment itself, uh, we realized that there was something more more general, we engineer chiral interactions. What this means is that the atoms moving to the right or to the left, they have different interactions. In our case, uh, when they move to the right, uh, these interactions are, are attractive. And these attractive interactions cancel uh, the behavior of the atoms that they try to expand. So the overall effect is that the atoms keep the same shape. So what we are realizing is it's a soliton when they move in one direction. If the atoms move in the opposite direction, uh, these atoms uh, expand like normal gas. So a soliton that only exists when the atoms move in one direction and not the other. Then we discussed uh, with Alessio Celli that did the theory um, for our experiment. And discussing a lot with them, really it was back and forth between experimentalists and theorists and we saw things from some point of view and he saw things from a different point of view that we came up with a good descriptions. The main problem was to enter in, uh, in the right framework on, of thinking in the right way. Because there were already a proposal about 10 years ago in which they, they suggest that indeed by coupling uh, atoms with, uh, with laser, one could engineer this kind of interaction. But the regime in which they're working, it's essentially unapplicable in the experiment because it requires uh, so laser that are so intense that uh, so essentially the, the many approximation break. And what I did was to find a, a, a concrete way of formulating a low energy theory that means what happens when you reduce the scale, you can find out a simplified theory and this simplified theory display the property we like. This experiment, it, it took us in total over two years to, to achieve all the data because Taking a, a single data set would take a full day running the machine and running the machine for a full day with, without errors is a non-trivial task by itself. The, the challenging part was to understand which regime you have to be in to see the correct effect coming from the correct place and to eliminate the effect coming from the wrong place. We had to spend a lot of time to understand what we were measuring and in which regime we should measure and in which regime what we were measuring actually mapped had a direct correspondence to these uh, theoretical results uh, that had been uh, proposed, these uh, gauge theories that had been uh, proposed. Uh, to our knowledge, it's the first time that uh, this type of topological gauge theory is uh, done with ultra-cold atoms. So it really opens the route of doing many more experiments afterwards for more complicated models. What we, we are aiming now is to see how we can extend this uh, simplified way of realizing this topological gauge theory to the, to the 2D case and realizing what is called this uh, Chern-Simon theory coupled to, to matter. It is sure that if we understand better how to engineer topological gauge theory, 
then we, we are also able to uh, use this property, or this special property, the, this, uh, the protection assured from topology for realizing even devices. Writing the paper also took a long time because the theory was as complicated as the experiment or more. Uh, so it was a very complicated paper to write, but once we finally got the, the papers submitted and, and reviewed and accepted, I think uh, for everyone there was this grand sense of it's, that's over now. It's not even about uh, publication, it's just uh, how we can understand nature and how can we can essentially simulate nature uh, in ways that we, we could not conceive in the past. Uh, like this idea of quantum simulation is it's relatively recent, like 30, 40 years ago, and to be able to manipulate these quantum systems very precisely, such that they behave like other quantum systems that, that we cannot access directly, I think it's a very, very exciting idea, and this is very satisfying to, to see in the lab.